In the contact stabilization process, the influent water enters the contact tank where it remains for about 30 minutes to an hour, which is a shorter duration than for a conventional system. The microbes are expected to quickly undergo what is called biosorption, and then they and in that process, that biosorption process, they take up the BOD that's in the wastewater. Biosorption is a physiochemical process that occurs naturally in certain biomasses, which allows it to passively concentrate and bind contaminants onto its cellular structure. So it's absorbed or adhered to the outside of the cellular structure. The microbes are then settled and sent to the stabilization tank where the organic matter that's been taken up in the contact tank is then stabilized while undergoing aerated conditions for a few hours. So in the stabilization tank, the microbes remain there for several hours so that the waste can be stabilized. The process operates in the conventional loading range. However, the total aeration volume is smaller than for a conventional biological reactor with an equivalent hydraulic retention time. This modification can allow an existing plant to increase its capacity without increasing its aeration system volume. This process is also advantageous in communities that have high INI or infiltration and inflow in their collection systems since the majority of the system solids are in the stabilization tank which isn't impacted by the liquid flow stream. And in this system the solids retention time is in the range of 3 to 15 days, so that's kind of an equivalent to your MCRT. So anywhere from 3 to 15 days on the solids retention time, and the RAS flow is set in the range of 40 to 70 percent. So 40 to 70 percent of the activated sludge is returned, and the balance is wasted.